Eat. Eat. Gypsy. Secret. nothing like it. It's a mixture of like full out gypsy, gorgeous, like Romanian music with Gigi Allen gutter style punk rock with like a very romantic side too, but a very, very, very hardcore side. Well, the band originally took roots in Vermont where, uh, as the legend says, and it's true, we met on a Russian wedding. There was three original members where we were invited to play on the same Russian, like everybody on the Russian wedding wants some fucking <coughs> gypsy shit. And uh, so the number of musicians were hired who didn't know each other before. And that's how I met. When I first met Eugene, Gogo Bordello was locked in his mind somewhere. He had a band called The Fags, and then he had a side band with two Russian guys called Flying Fuck. And that was kind of the, the birth of Gogol Bodarlo, I think, like the very beginning. They started incorporating the accordion, you know, with, with his music, and it grew from there. And that was in Vermont. Then after we came to New York uh, and started playing out, more musicians uh, expressed their enthusiasm for our efforts. The accordion player also moved down and they started, they all got together and, and started that way without a drummer and without a bass player, without horns and everything, and, and grew from there. And uh, we kept looking for the more musicians, for more arrangements, of course. And eventually it snowballed into what's been known now as a orchestra of fucking immigrants who are jamming in A minor for Gogol Bordello. The first time I ever saw Gogol Bordello, um, Eugene was down in his underwear in the first like 15 seconds of being on stage. And my friend and I moved back into the way back of the auditorium because we were a little nervous that there was going to be a little too much audience participation in the show. And then eventually, as he started to put his clothes back on slowly and just as spectacularly as taking them off, we got a little more comfortable and went up, and it was pretty amazing. Where is your friend now? I met Eugene here in New York. He had been going around the neighborhood asking some of the local Russian store owners, do they know a gypsy singer and dancer? I happened to be a customer at one of the places, and through him, we met. I auditioned right there, and we'd been together. It was more than a year ago already. For me, I come from Israel, so I have a lot of like Middle Eastern influences, although I was totally exposed to any Western music. Uh, but. Uh, my grandparents are from Poland and Russia, so for me, it's sort of like a journey back to my roots. Being a part of Gogol Bordello is extremely exciting because it's unpredictable, and it seems like it's the next new, fresh thing happening in music. Still currently being a member of some other bands, but Gogol Bordello stays very much a part of those bands because of the pressure of the performance and uh, happiness and hilarious cabaret thing. That's what I like. Cabaret has been a big constructing part of Google Bordello. It was, it was definitely artistic, but it was very low end and smut imagery. It's a lot of murder and raunchy stuff. You know the older you will get. The more productive you will get. It's a form of 
performance and music, which is all com combined, where extreme vulgarity sometimes meets the height of art. From the very start, I was in the bands that were executing obvious forms of punk rock. A huge part of me, I realized that late, 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 late at fucking night, I'm always by myself strumming and playing songs that are actually gypsy songs. The punk rock was the attempt to feel like that, to feel that rural belonging to the earth. I work on the kind of conceptual theater side of it, including props, costumes, and any kind of theatrical moments. I collaborate with Eugene, and, and we kind of come up with a concept for whatever it might be, and then, you know, I fabricate everything. It's theater, I think, in a lot of ways. <laughs> Being the only American in the band, um, I have to try and blend more American style beats in with traditional uh, Ukrainian folk. I think Gogol gave me the opportunity to bring that joy of gypsy music that I enjoy so much and infuse it into a whole different style. It's a new sound that's created, sort of a new hybrid. Well, the thing I like about Gogo Bordello is that um, there are among the bands like James Chancing Attortions, because uh, like what James did, he took, you know, he took all the music he loved, like jazz and funk, and he just totally twisted it up, fucked it up, turned it around, made it his own, and thrashed it. And I think that's what Gogo Bordello are doing to, you know, traditional Ukrainian music and gypsy music, and they're really making it their own. It's something new. is our passion for music you know and, and it's pretty amazing that in a fucking world that's rotten to the fucking core it actually still stands that's what excites this is why we call Gogol Bordello and not Ukrainian Gypsy nationalistic band it's an invention it's a diasporic music because our experience as immigrants transplanted from one part of the world into another has certainly left a mark on us that cannot be imitated. And that is why I consider our music to be authentic, not because it's so Ukrainian or because it's so gypsy, but because it is Ukrainian and gypsy and it is in New York. is so joyful doing it. People coming from different cultures, you know, running together with the same interests. Uh, the music, the great musicians they work with. And I love them too. They're, they're, they're sweet. So that too, it's not just the music. If someone else came along, oh, I know how to play, I'd say, good for you, but I love my <laughs> babies, I'm not leaving. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It was due to a change the previous name to something more uh, Google Bordello like. And so I was thinking, look, well, what would be more Google Bordello like than Google Bordello? Here it is. It's a little bordello.